Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we are doing an installation of the Thermaltake TH360 V2 Ultra EX ARGB Sync Snow Edition All in One Liquid Cooler. This is going to be into a AMD AM5 platform. There potentially will be another video for the Intel platform. Check out the links in the video description to find out more about that. This is a supplemental or supplementary video to go alongside with our review of this unit. So if you've watched that and you want to see how easy it is to install, then this is the video to watch. So we're going to go through this step by step slowly so you can see how to install it. It's actually very straightforward, but there's a few extra things we need to do because we have this IPS screen, which needs a USB connection, which the majority of coolers don't generally use, but it doesn't add a great deal of time, just takes a little bit more planning. So let's go straight on and get into it and we'll start attaching the fans to the radiator to start with. Now before we actually start it's probably worth taking a look at your radiator and doing a kind of custom loose fit into your case to work out roughly where things are going to go, where pipes are going to lay out, whether or not you want the pipes going to the left or to the right or whatever you want to do. In this installation we're going to be doing it with the pipes towards the front of the case and then the cooler twisting round towards the front. So we are going to want our fans attached on here at the bottom and we'll have to think about where we're going to route the cables through. On this particular case we've got a routing section up in this top corner so I'm going to leave the termination for the last fan at this end so then we can route the cables through the back nice and easily. So we'll flip this upside down and put it on the desk and we are going to be starting from this end for connectivity. So thinking about where our fans are going to go, if we get the connection on the end, the magnetic connection, leave that in place, and that's going to give you an idea of where you need to actually lay the fans. Then they're just magnetic, so they can just all magnetize together, approximately in place. And then we can put the screws down through to secure the fans to the radiator. Now we can tighten up the screws. You can use an electronic screwdriver. That will speed up the process a little bit. With the screws, don't over tighten them, just do it so that it snugs up to the plastic or rubber grommets. So now that bit's done, now we can concentrate on the mounting mechanism for the CPU. To set up the pump head for the AM5 or AM4 or other AMD platforms, you'll need two of the spring assisted tightening screws, you'll need the two metal brackets, and also you'll need the U shape clamp with the two holes, one top, one bottom. When you're getting ready to install, make sure you remove the plastic film, otherwise your temperatures will be absolutely awful. If you want to, you can use a little bit of IPA cleaner to wipe any residue off, although in my experience, there's very little left. That's much better. Now when you're actually attaching the U-clip, it goes on the bottom, which is this one here, you'll notice there's two very small indentations. Now some people will think that that goes on the pump side for the inlet and outlet, but it doesn't. It's actually the other way around. And also these brackets, you want them so they're facing kind of up when the pump is in its normal position. So line up the slots on the side, get your clamp and push it on and then lock it into position. And you should find it's basically halfway between the two edges. Next, we're gonna attach the retaining clamps, which go on the side. So these go with the clip outward, so there's a nice big gap. You don't do it that way, because there's no way to tighten it up. So make sure you do it so there is a nice gap in between the metals. Once you've done that on one side, get the spring assisted tensioner and just do a couple of turns just so that it doesn't fall out. It can be loose at the moment, that's fine. We are gonna tighten it up after. Then you can repeat the process on the other side. Just do a couple of turns just to make sure that it stays in place. 
That should leave you with something which looks a lot like this. Next, we're going to install the radiator into this top section of the case, and we're going to use the holes which are provided to mount it and screw it down. So let's hold that in position and we'll get a couple of screws started so you can see how I position the radiator. With the radiator ins installed with just one screw in opposing corners, just do it up loosely so that way you can still move the radiator around a little bit so you can get the positioning perfect for how you want it. Now I've got all of the screws installed in all of the hole locations but only loosely so again we've still got a little bit of wiggle room should we need to. This might be useful trying to get access to the motherboard headers, which we're going to do next. So next thing to do is to tighten up the rest of the screws on our cooler. Don't over tighten them. And there we go, just make sure that's all nice and firmly done. And then we can carry on with the rest of the insulation. Now for the actual fans themselves on our radiator, all you need to connect up is a three pin, five volt adjustable RGB, the one on the left. And also we've got our four pin PWM signal. The four pin PWM signal that is attached to the fans. You need to connect that to the motherboard header, which is called CPU fan. Don't connect this to the one that says AIO pump because you'll get the speeds wrong and yeah, it'll just be hard to set up. So the PWM one that connects to the fans at the top, always connect that to the CPU fan header. I'm going to route the cables through to the back and then pass them back through again to keep it tidy and then we'll plug them into the headers on our motherboard. So we're going to take our two connections, I'm going to pass them through at the back and pull them through to the other side then pull away any of the loose wiring. I would suggest to leave a little bit just in case you need to do any movement. But I think that's going to be absolutely fine. So now we've got our cables passed through, as you can just see they're dangling. So we want to connect one of them up to the one that says CPU fan, which you can see there, which will be highlighted on the video. And the other one is going to be the addressable RGB which is just at the top, which is slightly out of view at the moment. There's our CPU fan connected. Our addressable RGB connection is over on this side, so you can choose whether or not to try and stretch it over along here, or this case has a pass through just here, which might make things a little bit easier. You can then tuck any of the wires out of the way just to keep things neat. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the pump. So now we've applied our thermal paste. Now this is always one of those things which people get triggered by one way or the other. There isn't really a wrong or a right way of doing this, just do whatever works for you. I've come to the conclusion that using the cake spread method, as you can see here, so we've spread it across, pretty much all across the surface of the IHS. And to please some of those that say, oh, you'll get air bubbles in that, there's also a small dollop in the middle so pressure of the CPU cooler is going to press on that. And then if there's any gaps or microscopic gaps in the paste, then that should be uh, enough to kind of spread through with the pressure and the heat cycling. It should give you pretty good coverage. Again, do whichever suits you. Uh, this one works for me. Right, something else we're going to do now is we're going to take our USB connection, which goes at the bottom of the motherboard, but because the connection goes into the top of the pump head, through one of these two connections, the USB ones. I'm actually going to pre-route this through the top here and pull off the majority of the excess and just leave that to the side for now until we're ready to connect that up, just slightly out of the way. So at least it's there. Sometimes on some cases, once you've got the pump head installed, it may not be a terrific amount of clearance in this top section. So it's nice to get the cables put through now just to make life a little bit easier for our installation going forward. So the next part to do is to actually put the pump onto the CPU. So these clips go over the plastic clips here at the top and one at the bottom. So my suggestion is just put it straight over, hold it in place, and you should feel it latch into position. And 
there we go. You should hear a little bit of a click sometimes if there's a little bit of pressure. So that's now in place. So we can leave the tubes as they are at the moment because they're otherwise going to get in the way when we're trying to tighten up our screws here. So just make sure this is kind of lined up. And now grab yourself a screwdriver and just do equal turns, top and bottom. So about three or four turns. So one, two, three, four. 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 And that is basically at the bottom now. So one, two, three. Yep, and that's about as tight as it'll go. So now with AM5, my suggestion is, because of there's sometimes an issue with how much pressure is on the CPU, just do a uh, couple of turns, just two turns backwards. One, two. And then just make sure that the pump is still firmly in position. It is great, so that is fine. That's gonna be the optimum pressure setting. You don't want too much pressure, so don't screw the screws in all the way so they bottom out, because potentially you'll get an issue where it moves the pins on the tiny little pads at the bottom underneath the CPU, and your system won't boot, and you'll get the CPU light error, or you'll get the CPU and DRAM light error. So that is absolutely fine. Now that's in place, we can actually move the pipes into a more appropriate position. So I'm gonna bend them down a little bit, just so we can see more of that glorious IPS screen. And the last part is to plug in the pump header into the CPU pump header, which is over on the top here on this board. So now just decide where you want to route your cable for the pump. Depending on your setup, you may want to take it up the side of your VRM and out through the top and then back in through the other side, or you might want to tuck it around or whatever. The choice is yours depending on your motherboard and your case. So in this particular instance, as you can see, there wasn't really that many options of routing around. So I've just taken the uh, the path of least resistance up through the side there. Realistically, you're probably never gonna see that, but yeah, depending on your motherboard and the color preferences, it may or may not be visible. Now we can take a look at our USB connections. So we only need one of them. So the other one can be tucked back up through the rear of the case. And there's a USB connection in the top of the pump head. So we can just go ahead and pop that in. And then again, you have the option of then kind of cable managing it, however you see fit or whichever works for your particular setup. So on this particular installation, what I've done is put the cable in the top there, as you can see, and just tuck the cable down behind here and then route straight up. So we've got some vertical lines. Try not to put too much stress on this bend because potentially you can lose connectivity or get connectivity issues. So just make sure it's in firmly. So the last, one of the last parts of the process for the cabling is to connect up your USB header. Now on this particular motherboard, we've got two USB headers at the bottom here and the USB plug is keyed. So there is a, a blanked off port. So just go ahead and plug that into your USB header on the motherboard. And then you can push or poke the rest of the wires out of the way just to tidy things up. And that is it for the USB connectivity. But that is effectively it. So that is our AIO installed. Now all we need to do is to fire up, do some testing. And uh, for those of you that are interested in the outcome of this, please head over to the full review video. But for the rest of you, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.